Okay, we're gonna try this again. I had a weak signal where I was in my office. So uh, we're live. This is Harrison Smith with Death House and it looks like I am now on. It's telling me I am live. So we are on Facebook Live talking about Death House tonight and uh, I'm looking forward to your questions. I'm seeing up. Oh, there's Amanda. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> Do you have a question? <laughs> I'm just going to check my text from the administrator. I am on. So, okay. So I've got uh, somebody saying hello. I said hello back. And uh, how long have I been in the business? That's the question. Uh, I started with the fields officially in 2009. And uh, I had Tara Reid and Cloris Leachman in that film. That was my first uh, big professional film. And uh, I got into horror since I was a kid. What got me into it was my grandmother. Uh, we used to watch all the old horror movies growing up on Creature Feature, Dr. Shock out of Philadelphia, and uh, basically Jaws. I saw Jaws at eight years of age, fell in love with the genre, and loved it ever since. Chip asks if there is a release date. Not yet, Chip. We are waiting on that. Uh, once a buyer takes this film, then we'll go from there. Um, right now, we do not have a release date, but we are planning uh, somewhere between January and April of 2017. Just waiting for a couple more questions to come through here. I see little Facebook lights likes going across the screen. <laughs> While we're waiting for these questions to come through, I don't know if it's a connection. Um, for the Horror Honeys, if they are watching, uh, I am wearing my official Horror Honeys uh, t-shirt that I wear to all these events and functions anytime I'm out promoting horror. So I love what the girls do and happy to wear this shirt. And they also give great stickers. I see a lot of likes going across the screen, but I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, so I'm waiting to see. I don't know if there's a connection problem here. And if the administrator is watching this right now, could you please text me to let me know if questions are coming up and I'm not seeing them. I'll try to go to my desktop, but uh, right now the connection is bad because my desktop is down below where the Wi-Fi is. <laughs> All right, we're gonna see here, no other questions. A whole bunch were coming through and then it just suddenly stopped. So I'm gonna check with the administrator by text. So if I go off camera for a moment, I will be right back. Okay, uh, questions are coming in, the administrator's telling me, but I'm not seeing them on my phone. So um, uh, one of the questions was, how did Lindsay Hartley get involved? Uh, she approached us. Uh, she wanted to get into horror. As most of her fans know, she's a soap opera star and she wanted to get into feature films and mostly break into the genre. She read the script and she absolutely loved the script. So we got her. Uh, she plays one of the five evils. She plays Balthoria. And um, you can see you can see her, we, we're keeping the five evils kind of pretty quiet in this movie and promoting them because they're a really cool ending to this film. But if you look uh, online on Twitter, we've put a lot of photos of her uh, as Balthoria 
uh, on, on Twitter, especially for our promotional for the upcoming Days of the Dead convention where we'll be doing that as well. I'm just going to check for more questions from the administrator. Uh, one of the questions was, will there be a soundtrack? And the answer is, hell yes, there will be a soundtrack. As a matter of fact, Nuclear Blast, which represents a number of um, uh, heavy metal bands, uh, is going to be backing us for a soundtrack. And we also will have an original score soundtrack from our composer, uh, John Avarice, who has done a lot of, pretty much every score for all of my motion pictures. So the answer is yes, there will be a great soundtrack. And we're also getting um, uh, the band Twisted involved as well too we love those guys and uh, we can't wait to get them as a part of this as well so yeah it's going to be a pretty kick-ass soundtrack okay alexandra asks if um i hope i pronounced that right uh asks if do i prefer cgi or practical effects and the answer that's a really good question uh the answer is i prefer practical all the time and i think you folks are going to be really pleased with death house uh, mostly because we really focused on practical makeup effects. So, um, but we do use CGI. We do have visuals, visuals because with a budget of ours, you know, there are a lot of things that, that CGI can take care of that we wouldn't have the money for. However, we use CGI as supplemental. So when you see a lot of these effects, they're practical, and some of them we use CGI to clean up any uh, defects or imperfections. But I think horror fans especially are going to be really, really happy uh, with the amount of practical effects. And I'm going on record to say this, Alexandra, and that is um, we have a practical effect in this film that I'm saying on record rivals the chest burster scene from Alien. So I'm really excited about that. Okay, Hilda is asking if anything weird happened in Holmesburg Prison. I gotta tell you, no. I did not experience anything, except most of the stars will tell you it was cold in Holmesburg Prison. Um, the guards, everybody, everybody was fantastic to us. And the administration and the, and the uh, Philly City Police, they were terrific. Did anything supernatural or weird happen? No. But our crew, however, uh, they got a book called, I think it's called um, Acres of Skin is what it is called and the book is all about Holmesburg and the human experimentation that went on inside the prison around the turn of the century through the 1940s and 50s uh, it was really really a messed up book and the crew every time we went to shoot would always give a kind of um, uh, like a little did you know kind of thing that happened and wigged out some of the stars so um, supernatural no but as my grandmother used to say you should be more afraid of the living than the dead so uh, yeah, that pick up the book, Acres of Skin. I'm just checking for another question. Sherry is hey, Sherry. Sherry is asking what scene took the most takes in Death House. Wow, um, we had one in the prison itself that took a lot of takes because uh, we had somebody pass out while we were shooting it. So that was the longest of, of all the takes. I'm going to say, though, the prison riot scene took the most takes. That, that basically took an entire day to do and a, and a large number of takes. If, if you mean by bloopers or screw-ups, not a lot. The stars were just dead on. And so um, really no issues there with like a number of takes of them getting it right or anything like that. Uh, however, the prison scene, the prison break riot scene, a lot of takes on that and all day shoot. Michael, Michael is asking if there was, if there is uh, a plan for a Death House 2. The answer I can tell you is this, Michael. Yes, there are five sequels planned at this point in time, and we're really excited. Uh, we have the script for the second one pretty much done, and uh, we're getting everything ready uh, to really ramp this up for, for an entire franchise. So I don't want to give too much away from it, but I can tell you that the way Death House ends, it's totally set up to further the adventures of uh, Cody and Courtney Palm. So we're really excited. Okay, and I'm just sorry about that. I'm just waiting uh, on another question. Looks like one is... Chip is asking, how do we get Courtney Palm in Death House? Uh, we're really lucky to have gotten Courtney Palm in Death House, and she is fantastic as Agent Boone. Uh, I'm a fan of Zombievers. So um, I started up a, a kind of like Twitter friendship with Courtney because one night I was watching Zombievers and I reached out to her on Twitter and she responded back and um, I loved her in the film. And I really think Zombievers is a lot of fun. It, it's a good film and it's a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. So um, as Death House started to take shape, uh, we approached her to be Agent Boone. So we sent her the script. Uh, she read the script and I 
from, now this is Courtney saying, I'll let Courtney one day be quoted exactly, uh, but she said she was only halfway through it when she contacted her agent and said she wanted to commit to this film. So we were really happy to get her. Okay, Hilda is asking, uh, what is my dream project uh, and who would I love to work with? Um, wow, you know, it's, it's funny, this movie has a lot of uh, older stars from the genre, long history of, of the genre, of the horror genre. So Hilda, uh, I would love to work with people like um, Candy Clark. If anybody's not familiar with her, get familiar with her. I'd like to work with Diane Franklin. I want to work with Amanda Wiss, and as a matter of fact, Amanda Wiss uh, from Nightmare on Elm Street, we are working on something coming up this month. And Heather Leggenkamp, there are so many I would like to work with, uh, star-wise. So I, I always, it's hard to answer that because I don't want to leave anybody out. But there are a number of people I would really love to work with. I really wish Roddy McDowell was still around. I wanted to work with him. And um, I'm a huge Fright Night fan, so pretty much anybody from there. My next project coming up, well, we have the Death House sequel. That's one. Uh, believe it or not, I'm doing a dark mafia comedy coming up called uh, Garlic and Gunpowder. And i um, pretty excited about it. I, I've always wanted to do comedy. It's a fun script. It's a dark kind of a Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid uh, kind of script. And I'm pretty excited to, to get this going. It looks like we're going to be shooting that in um, October or November. We're getting things aligned on that. The script is going through a final polish. And uh, really excited. So that's my next project coming up. So uh, let's see. I think some more questions are coming through here. I'm sorry that I have to constantly switch out. And let's see what goes on. Just waiting here for a second. Here we go. And excuse me. Wow, working with Kane Hodder. Um, I believe it was uh, it was Dark Universe that asked me this question. Uh, Kane Hodder was a blast to work with. And I'm not one of those people that just sucks up and says everybody was wonderful to work with. What I am saying is, and they were on this film, horror people are some of the most generous and nicest people to work with. Kane, uh, what I wasn't expecting was is um, such a really cool sense of humor. Uh, he could just do this jackass kind of humor that was terrific, and he's a big prankster. So it was a lot of fun to work with Kane, and he is an expert on quoting Blazing Saddles. So if you ever see Kane at another convention, whatever you do, bring up Blazing Saddles and give him a couple good quotes from it. He'll fire it right back. Uh, he, was, he was great to work with. And um, yeah, he brought a lot of interesting things to Sieg. One of them being, uh, he wanted the beard, the goatee uh, that Sieg has in the film. He wanted it braided at the end. And he had all these really cool ideas for a background on Sieg. And uh, he and Courtney Palm came up with something really cool that was spontaneous on camera. And we caught it. I went back, I asked them to recreate it so we had it perfectly in frame. And um, that made it to the film, and that was a total spontaneous moment. I'm not going to say what it is right now, but I, I was thrilled when I saw them do it. So it was fantastic. Let me just check. We have another question. There we go. I'm back. Uh, Juan asked, do we plan on shooting in Pennsylvania again? The answer is yes. Uh, we have a couple projects that we are getting ready to get up and going. And as a matter of fact, I'm shooting uh, in Pennsylvania at the end of this month with Amanda Wiss from A Nightmare on Elm Street. So yeah, I, I love shooting in PA. Okay, Joe asked, will there be outtakes and, and bloopers and stuff like that and extras on the DVD? Absolutely. Uh, we have so much um, in the way of Easter eggs and stuff that we couldn't even fit into the film. We'd make the film like three hours long. So we're going to have a bonus track uh, on the DVD and we do have a lot of really fun outtakes. So um, yeah, that's a great question. There, there was so much fun making this movie. Uh, it was a real blast to, to make Death House, which is kind of ironic that it's a horror movie, and yet it was just so much fun. And I have another question. Riley asks, where do we plan on premiering Death House? Uh, that's a great question. I know there's going to be a Los Angeles premiere and likely a New York and definitely a Philly premiere because that's where we shot most of the film. We shot three quarters of the film uh, in Philadelphia, so we want to do something special down there. So I don't know where you live, Riley. I don't know if you're in the United States or if you're on East or West Coast, but the plan is is a bi-coastal premiere. So stay tuned, we'll, we'll know as soon as, we'll post it as soon as we know, that kind of thing. I'm just gonna check for another question. Susie Bacon says, hair and makeup had a blast on set. Yeah, it shows because you guys will be showing up in some of those bloopers and outtakes. So uh, yeah, we had a good time. It really was a fun time making this movie.
and just waiting out uh, looks like another question will be coming through and I'm sorry I have to go back and forth but I can't use the downstairs so it's kind of tough I'll lose the connection just waiting for the next one hang on John is asking when are we negotiating with distributors um, we're in the process of that now the the real issue John is is most distributors well they all have the same question and that is is the movie done the movie is not done I mean it's shot and it's in the can but it's now going through uh, post-production right now so all the visual effects are being laid in for example we just got the trailer done and that's going to debut at Days of the Dead in Louisville, Kentucky, coming up uh, September 3rd, as a matter of fact, at 3 p.m. our panel is, and we're going to world premiere the trailer there. Uh, so what we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to negotiate, sorry about the train in the background, um, we're trying to negotiate the best deal, and we are looking at a theatrical for this film and a pretty wide theatrical. So we are negotiating, but we don't have anything solid until the film is done. Excuse me, I'm just going to check here. Chris is asking, do we have any plans to have a road show with the stars? Fantastic question, Chris. Uh, part of our marketing strategy for this film is to take this directly to the fans and bring stars with us. All of the celebrities uh, are on board to market this movie and promote this film. So we're really, really happy about that. Everyone has been just so damn supportive in this. So do we plan on going on the road? Absolutely. We want to hit conventions. We want to go to college campuses. We want to hit that demographic that knows who these people are from, the, from their horror and that they know their horror. That's really important. Know your horror when you go to see Death House. If you go on my uh, company site, I have a, a link for Horror 101, which is basically these are the building block films that you need to see uh, to understand Death House. There's so much history to this movie and the people that are in it. Melina or Melena uh, is asking, can we get more information on the five evils? I can tell you some things, but we're not going to show a lot. Uh, I can tell you this, they're mentioned in the trailer, but we don't show them in the trailer. But the five evils are played by Bill Mosley, uh, Lindsay Hartley, Michael Berryman, Vincent Ward, and Vernon Wells. So if you know those characters, they are the five evils, okay, if you know those actors. And um, they play a really cool kind of a role at the end of this and, and an, imp an important position in this as well too. They're kind of like the soul of the film and you'll see what I mean. So we're really excited about this and I know Bill Mosley was absolutely thrilled to play the part uh, that he does as one of the five evils and they're in the film quite a bit. So uh, I can't wait to get the reaction people will have to them. Alexandra is asking how awesome was the stunt team? Well, I can tell you this, I, I don't have to answer if the film will when we see that prison riot scene. Uh, between the guards and, and the prisoners that escape, that it is just brilliant. And it is literally uh, three minutes worth of brutality in that movie. Just three minutes straight of a prison break and brutality. I love Jay Green. I loved all that he did for our stunt work in this film. And uh, yeah, yeah, the stunt team is pretty damn awesome. The question is, uh, do we plan to show at the Sherman Theater in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania? Uh, if, if they will have us, yeah, and if uh, our dis distribution plan will allow, um, we will see. Being that the film was shot in Philadelphia, likely the premiere will be down in Philadelphia and not sure about playing the Sherman this time around. I know some of my previous films have done so, um, but I can't answer that definitively this time around. So uh, we'll see. I'm just checking here for another question. Here comes another great question here uh, from Dark Universe, and they're asking, um, "Do we plan on bringing out any other horror names uh, into the into the sequel?" Uh, the answer is, "Yeah, we're hoping that the success of this one. We're hoping that a lot of the horror community sees this and goes, oh my God, we got to be a part of this.'" So um, the answer is yes. We don't know who yet. We're not in negotiation with anyone. We have certain actors from the first film that will return for the sequel and um, that's going to be great but for new characters or new actors no can't answer that at this point in time plans for Robert Englund in part two absolutely we love Robert um, Robert's schedule did not permit for this time around 
the film came together pretty darn quickly. Uh, we were working to get this finance, the money fell in place, and Robert, I believe, was overseas at the time. So uh, scheduling was really tough. Uh, do we want Robert in the sequel? Absolutely, and we hope we'll have him. We really do. He's a really nice guy. And am I casting extras for my next project? No, no, Juan. Nope, we're good on this one. Uh, this project is a smaller project. I can say it is a virtual reality project, and we're really, really psyched uh, to have Amanda on board with this, Amanda Wiss from A Nightmare on Elm Street. And uh, it has something to do with a spin-off kind of venture from one of my previous horror films, uh, Six Degrees of Hell. So if you saw that film with Corey Feldman, uh, this is a branch-off story and kind of like a, like a spin-off, really, of that original story from that film. So this is a virtual reality project. It's not a full feature film, but I'm really hoping my next feature film will have Amanda in it as well. So we're excited to have her too. Another question coming. Chris is asking any plans for Spooky Empire coming up. Uh, if Spooky Empire invites us, we'll be there. We want to hit all of the conventions. And if it's not me, it could be Felissa Rose. Um, it could be some of our, what we call our prison detail that will be out at the conventions. They will be collecting emails, handing out flyers and stickers. We're starting a, a death house newsletter uh, that we're gonna be keeping people up to date on and great chances for premiere tickets, uh, also memorabilia from the film. So um, yeah, if Spooky Empire will have us, we will be there. We'll have a table, a booth, whatever it is, we wanna be there. The question is, is Balthoria inspired by Elizabeth Bathory? Bathory? And the answer is yes, that is correct. She is inspired by that. Balthoria in our film is a one of the five evils. She is not a vampire, but she does bathe in the blood of her victims. So uh, very good call. Someone knows their history. It's terrific. There's a lot of history in this movie. And uh, that's one of the best parts about Death House. It's not what you're expecting. You know, this is not a standard slasher film where we just throw Kane Hodder and a bunch of people into a film and start killing everybody. That's not what it is. Here comes another question. The question is, again, um, just so you know, we are planning a theatrical release. Yes, we don't know how many screens yet. That will depend on the distributor. And um, in addition, when is the release? We are hoping for between a January and April 2017 release for this movie. And again, yes, we are planning a theatrical for this film. That's what our investors want. And uh, it'll, again, depend on the distributor, but we're getting pretty ramped up and excited for the stuff that we have in this movie. I think we're gonna have some distributors pretty excited. Another question. Okay, Sarah asks, when writing a screenplay, do I prepare bios on the characters? I don't write them out. However, um, I do make notes. Like, I, I don't pre prepare like formal bios, but I do make notes on my characters, uh, giving them background, fleshing them out. And then a lot of times, Sarah, that kind of comes naturally as you're writing it. Once you start giving them dialogue and they start speaking, uh, you, you start to kind of fill things in. And then I do a lot of doubling back. I'll go back and then something comes to me and I'm like, oh my God, I, I think I'll add this. So uh, yeah, that's a great question. They all get bios, but just not formalized ones. A lot of notes on each character. And another question. Will the Six Degrees spinoff be in another uh, haunted hotel? The answer is yes, it will be. And uh, we shot the first film at the Hotel of Horror in Sailorsburg, Pennsylvania, and they were wonderful to us. And the, that's a real place. Like what we, we put the real phone number of the Hotel of Horror and everything in the movie. So the owners of the Hotel of Horror, Horror have said that, you know, after the movie was released, they were getting calls, not just all over the United States, but people from all over the world once the movie got out there. So yes, we will be shooting at another horror establishment again. And Amanda asks, will there be any Death House posters and giveaways? Hell yes. Uh, we've already started the process. In fact, uh, one winner has already won a complete autographed script by every one of the horror celebrities in the film. We have two more of those scripts to give away. So those are the big prizes because those scripts, they're pretty valuable, okay? They have signatures from every single horror star that is in Death House. So that's like a real time capsule piece. So um, between that and posters, artwork, um, props, yeah, there'll be a lot of giveaways coming up, so stay tuned. Sherry asks, how was it like working with Lloyd Kaufman? 
it was a dream to work with Lloyd Kaufman because Lloyd is one of those people in the industry now as a filmmaker that he's kind of one of the last of his kind. Uh, things have changed a lot in filmmaking and especially in horror filmmaking. Uh, Lloyd was just nice. He had everybody laughing. Uh, he plays a serious role in the film and he has a really good funny line though. We, we kept one of his funny lines. Uh, however, everybody loved him. He came, he brought like, um, like awards and, and trophies for people. And he was just one of the nicest damn people you could ever meet. And uh, he's, his impact on the industry is, is just, you, you can't even quantify how important he is to both horror and the filmmaking industry for independent film. There we go. Dark Universe asked, uh, what can I say about Gunnar Hansen in the movie? Well, I can tell you this. Uh, we have footage of Gunnar that will appear in the film, and I'll give another hint that he will appear alongside Debbie Rashan. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, Gunnar died uh, last year, just before we went into production on this motion picture. So um, we sadly lost him, and it was Gunner's dream to get this done. So we, through the miracle of CGI, well, here's a, a place where CGI can actually come in useful. And uh, Gunner Hansen will be making an appearance in this motion picture. And like I said, alongside Debbie Rashan, and we picked Debbie specifically to be there with Gunner because they've done a number of films together as well, too. There we go. Any plans for Zombie Killers 2, I was asked. Yeah, yeah, we have a full script. It's called Devolution. And uh, it picks up about maybe three months after the uh, events of the first film. And it takes place all on a destroyer, on a naval ship. Now, we know that Fear the Walking Dead went ahead and shot their second season on a ship. Uh, we had it all before they did. Uh, it's just uh, they had the money first before, <laughs> before we did. So um, yes, there is a sequel that is planned. It is fully written, and uh, we're just waiting the word on that. And if, if everything moves the way that we hope, there will be a sequel to Zombie Killers. We're, we're pretty excited about that one too. Here comes another question. And there we go. Uh, Philip asks, what are the elements of making a horror movie? You know, it's um, horrors in, in a very different place right now. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, what's scary to you, Philip? That's a real question. Uh, the best horror, I think, works on what really scares us as people, not just aliens coming down from another planet or, or even ghosts. What is it that really scares us? For me, for example, I, I think Lake Mungo is probably one of the scariest films I've seen in a long time. And yet I've had people who have watched it who said, oh, it's boring, it's all, you know, whatever. Um, I, I don't know, is, is horror jump scares to you? Uh, like, you know, conjuring kind of scares where it's a lot of quiet and then boom, scary images and mirrors, clowns, I have no idea. So, you know, the elements of horror, I think it comes down to a fundamental element, and that is what scares you, what is truly terrifying. For example, I don't think Jaws really classifies as a horror film. Um, it's more of an adventure movie, uh, but the scary part about it is just a very basic element. No matter how good of a swimmer you are, uh, no matter how brave you are, big you are, strong you are, when you're in the water, and a, not a swimming pool, but an ocean, a lake, a pond, and it's dark, and something bumps you from underneath, it brings out a very primitive element in all of us. So um, I think that's the basic element in horror. I have another question here. Shannon is saying she's happy we're putting Gunnar Hansen in the movie, and he was an amazing person. Gunnar was a very generous man. And uh, when the script was brought to me, he said, I need help with certain things. Uh, he had been shopping the script around for a while, and uh, he came to me. And we worked hand in hand on it. And Gunner said before he died, the script has his blessing. And it's funny, when, when he died, he knew he was dying. He was such a gentleman. He would never let on. Nobody knew he was sick. And, um, but when he was dying, he did tell his manager, he said, look, use my death to promote this movie. This will be my last movie. And if you have to film a promotional spot on my grave, then do so. That's the kind of man Gunnar Hansen was. And the film will be dedicated to him as well. So yeah, I agree. He was an amazing man. <laughs> Jennifer is asking, were there any pranks on set? And uh, the answer is yeah. And most of them were from Kane Hodder. So uh, yeah, uh, lots of pranks. They mostly screwed with each other, which was really funny. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, it was funny to watch Kane walk in uh, to uh, the set and Bill Mosley instantly started busting on him. And then later on, uh, Kane, Michael Berryman, and Bill Mosley, they all did their, uh, they did the Three Stooges, hello, hello, hello. They all did that. And I think they got that on camera. But I remembered saying to the assistant director at the time, I said, we're, we're looking at something pretty special here. So um, those guys were terrific. And yeah, a lot of pranks, a lot of goofiness on set, and uh, just a real damn good time. Also, Felissa Rose. Felissa Rose is a troublemaker and a lot of fun on set as well, too. I think most people who work with her will tell you, she, she's like a ferret. She's just a troublemaker. I'm going to get another question right here. Okay, John is asking, will Cody and Courtney be in the sequel? Yeah, I'm not giving away any spoilers here. Absolutely, they will be in the sequel. Yep, they do not die. I know everybody's like, oh my God, you're giving away a spoiler. Trust me, I'm not giving away a spoiler. We have so many cool things in this film and a lot of surprises. And I'm telling everybody right now who's watching, make sure you sit through the credits, okay? We have a fantastic uh, post-credit Easter egg that's gonna show up and it's 100% genuine. So when you see it, you'll understand. But we're really excited about that post-credit Easter egg. So yeah, yeah, um, they will be in the sequel. Um, the sequels are built around them and um, I can't guarantee they're gonna live all the way to the end of, of the sequels, but yeah, they are, they are in part two. I'm just waiting here on another question. just see here there's just a bit of a weak connection here so bear with me as another question comes in let's see while I'm waiting on this question because it's saying my connection is weak so I don't know if anybody is reading me um, the big thing that I do want to emphasize is please know your horror if you're under 35 years of age know your horror basics know why these people are famous know why the films that they were in were of cultural relevance we just didn't shoot a movie with a lot of horror names in it we shot a movie that pays immense respect uh, to the genre and the people that had participated in it so um we took this very seriously so hang on here a second this <laughs> signal comes back someone out there just asked if T tiffany uh, Shepis and Felissa Rose were on set together and the answer is absolutely yeah that, that was dangerous to put these two women together um, what was their attitude like on set like were they funny yeah they were they were great um, Tiffany Shepis has a wonderful sense of humor and uh, she was a blast and they they had this running gag um, and Tiffany can explain it but they had a, a code word that they were using uh, while they were on set with the other guys that were playing the doctors so that was kind of interesting um but yeah it was it was a lot of fun and, and like i said the two of them are just hell raisers as well too they're kind of like the bad girls of the set so it was a lot of fun i do have to wrap this up in about five minutes so i'll take any uh last questions that are coming in i do apologize again for any uh weak signal that is that is coming through here and i'm doing this whole thing from my cell so we'll see what happens Okay, just waiting on one more. Here comes question. Wow, another good question. What does it take to get a national release? Well, I mean, we have the cast. That's one. And the real big answer right now is your film doesn't suck. And what I mean by that, like, it's funny how people use that word suck. Well, you know, they didn't like something, so it sucked. Um, what we're talking about is, is the film of high quality? Did we shoot a good looking film? That we can say yes. Um, will people love it? I sure as hell hope so. We've given it a good time. One of the big things is we're not trying to be the scariest movie of the year. However, we made a damn good horror film out of it for this coming year. And we really use these people properly in this film. So to get a national release, film's got to be good. Uh, it's got to have an attractive cast, which it does. The film is good. And it, you know, we hope that a distributor says, yeah, this is what we want to do. We think that will be the case. So we're pretty excited. And hang on one second here. And what was it like working with Dee Wallace? This is um, my second film with Dee. Dee has kind of become like my adopted mom. And it's a pleasure working with Dee. Uh, I love working with her. That's why she's back. And uh, she really killed it in Zombie Killers. And she plays Dr. Fletcher 
in Death House, and she's brilliant in it. Uh, she plays this very cold, very efficient, and also, I'll let you decide if she's evil or not. I think Dee would have a very good answer as to whether Dr. Fletcher is evil or not. Um, but she is a major star in the film, and she has uh, quite an adventure throughout Death House. So, but she was wonderful to work with and always is. Anytime I can get to work with her, I, I will. I just love her. <laughs> will we use the same crew for the sequel? Well, that'll depend on where we shoot it. So um, I would love to keep it here based in Pennsylvania. I really would. I like keeping my work all based in PA. So um, Sue, yeah, the answer is if, if we're here in PA, absolutely. You don't have to worry about that. And if Sue, you're still watching, you're going to be hearing from me because something locked up uh, pretty soon for hair and makeup. And um, I'll be in touch about that as well, too. So I have to start winding it down. I can take one more question. And uh, this has been a lot of fun. It looks like we had a pretty good turnout here. So a lot of questions came in. Anybody have one last question before I have to go? Sorry I had to be outside. You can hear the cicadas and the bugs and everything in the summertime. We'll wait for one more question to come through. And as I said, in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, uh, big thing is, please know your heart. That's really, really important. Go to my website. Uh, it's on Twitter. You can just click on it. Go to horror on my website. And how many of those films have you seen? These are all the basic films of the genre. Hang on. My administrator is telling me you folks all had a good time, that you loved it. They're saying thank you. And my answer is as well, thank you all. And uh, we hope you'll all turn out and support Death House. And please spread the word on this really cool and innovative horror film. So again, thank you. Have a great night and support Death House. Go to our Facebook, go to our Twitter, and uh, see you at the conventions as well too.